function f of x, we are going to change it by adding 2 to it. Andrew, what did you say that that would do? You said down 2. Do you guys agree with Andrew? You don't need to change it on this one. So what would it be? So adding on the end, it does go up or down, right? So Andrew's right there, but instead of going down, just do what it tells you to do, which would be what? Up to. So all I'm going to do is take all of these points and shift it up to. This one, up to. Even this one, we're going to go off the graph a little bit, but it goes up to. So now everything has been shifted up to. We call that a vertical shift. So if you add a constant, just shift it up. If you subtract a constant, shift it down. You remember that with your parent functions? Just adding goes up, subtracting goes, goes down. Okay, that was the first one. Let's keep on rolling. All right, well now we're going to times it by a negative. So turn to your neighbor again. What would timesing by a negative do? It should be pretty easy. We just saw it in our the function dance song. Generally, what do you say? And we're going to say a little more precise, flip over the x-axis. Is it possible to flip over the y? Yes, and we're going to see that as well. So we're going to take these points, and the y value is going to be times by negative. So we're just going to go, instead of here being at 1, I'm going to zoom down a bit, we'll be at negative 1. Here at 2, 3, we're going to be at 2, negative Four, three will be four, negative three. And lastly, instead of five, five, we'll be at five, negative five. So it should look like it just got flipped over the x-axis. And if we zoom down here a little bit, there's just a little note that when you times it by a negative, it's going to reflect it across the x-axis, which is what we just said. Okay, so adding on the outside, it's going to move it up or up. Tracking on the outside moves it down, timesing by a negative is going to flip over the x. What about timesing by a constant here? So we've got 2 here, we're going to do 2 times f of x and 1 half times f of x. So again, turn to your neighbor. What do you expect timesing by 2 to do, and what will timesing by 1 half to do? Since 2 is a stretch, what does that mean the 1 half will be? Yeah, we're going to call that a compression or a shrink. So that 1 half is going to be. I'm going to, I'm going to come back to that 1 half for now. Let's just take the y values here, and what we're going to do is double them. Because we said it was vertical, right? That's this way, that's our y. Take our y values, and we're going to times them by 2. So instead of being 0, 1, what should we see that? because we're doubling the y value. Instead of 2, 3, what are we going to be at 2? Same with 4. 4 will be at 6. Instead of 5, 5, what are we going to see? 5 all the way up here at 10. And my drawings aren't the greatest, but you see how that's been stretched out? Imagine this is like silly putty or something, you're just stretching it out like that, okay? 
Now, what about the one half? We said that would kind of shrink, or in other words, compress. So what we're going to do now is take those y values, but we're going to do half of what they are. So what's half of one? Half of three. And half of five. So if we play connect the dots. Oh, wait, that was bad. Hold on. I didn't go over far enough. Does that look better? So this is one half f of x in the green because it's been blue one that's just been compressed down. So when you're timesing on the outside, it's going to be a stretch or a shrink. What determines if it's a stretch or a shrink? If it's greater than one. If it's bigger than one, it stretches. If it's less than, if it's between zero and one, it's going to compress it down. Good. Is there anything new so far? Hopefully this is all stuff you've seen before. This is just formalizing what we're saying. As long as a is greater than um, 1, we're going to stretch it. If it's between 0 and 1, it's going to compress it. Okay? Just formalizing what we already figured out. All right, so now let's do a couple of these, okay? We're going to start by taking f of x, and we're going to let f of x be square root of x. So why don't you guys, it should only take you about 20 seconds. Graph your parent function square root of x. We did that in 1.2, so we should know where those key points are. Take 20 seconds and let's graph it. You need to be able to just graph your parent function pretty quick. And those are your key points there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a new function here. We're going to take the square root of x, we're going to times it by 2, and then subtract 1. We've gone over both of those, but what will those do? So turn to your neighbor, 10 seconds. What will effect will the 2 have? What effect will the negative 1 have? And does the order matter in which we do them? 10 seconds, go. together here. So, Nathan House, you're on the spot. What will the transformations do? What does times by 2 do? What does subtracting 1 do? Great. Good. I'm going to put Vs for a vertical stretch. Nice job. You guys agree with that? Now, does the order matter? Yes, because if I were to stretch this out first, I'm going to stretch it and shift it down one. Would that be different than if I shifted it down one and then stretched it? The answer is yes, yeah, if I shift this down, then I'm going to stretch it away from the x-axis. So always stretch first. You guys should just know that from my sports. It's easy to stretch it first. So let's start by stretching this thing, okay? I'm going to take all the y values, and what are we timesing it by? we're doubling it, so let's start by doubling it. 0 times 2 is still 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And 3 times 2 is 6. So what I have right here, this is 2 square roots of x. Let's 
Stretches are the harder part, so now that we've got that done, we're pretty easy. What do we just need to do? Just move everything down once. I'm going to get my new color here. Let's go to that. I'm just going to take all of those blue points and just go down one. So looking at the red one, where do we start seeing the x values? At zero, do we include zero? Yeah, and then it just kind of goes from there. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to zero. What about the y values? Where do we start seeing those? Negative one, and then we just go from there. So that's the domain and range. If you wanted to write it in interval notation, but we're only looking at the red one, so the blue is our parent function, or sorry, the green is our parent function, we stretched it up to the blue one, and then we shift it down to the red one. You've done this before, right? Let's keep on going. We can find ones that maybe are a little more challenging. All right, we're back to this one, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do f of x plus two, where we're doing the x plus two inside the parentheses. Alexis, yeah. what do you think that's going to do to Alexis? Uh, Not up to. Up to was when it was on the outside. So how would it be different if it's on the inside versus on the outside? No, sorry. That was W with this A. So this is actually, it's going to be your left or right. So if it's on the outside, it's up or down. On the inside, it's going to be left. Now the question here, guys, is will this be left or will it be right? Do you remember what the trick was with parentheses? It always lies. So do the parentheses. So which way is this going to go? Left. You see the positive? Some people think right, but we're doing the opposite. That's going to go to the left, too. So all I'm going to do on this one is take these key points, and we're just shifting it left, too. So instead of 0, 1, I'm shifting that to left. connect the dots. It should look the exact same as what it was before, just shifted to the left. Does that look pretty good? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So if we look at the bottom notes here, it just gives us formalizing what we did. So if you're subtracting a number, then you're going to shift it to the right. If you're adding the number inside of it, then you're going to shift it to the left. So you're doing the opposite. That's just formalizing what we just said there. Okay, here's one that maybe you've seen before, maybe you haven't. What are we doing on this one? We have a negative, but where is the negative? Inside. Now, when we saw the negative on the outside, how did it flip it? Yes. And he guesses what negative on the inside will do? You are correct. So a negative on the inside is going to flip over Y. So what I'm going to do is take these points here, and we are going to just flip them over the y-axis. Now, if it's already on the y-axis, then it can't flip any, right? It just stays where it's at. So this point right here, instead of being at positive 2, it's going to be at negative 2. And instead, this one, instead of being at 4, it's going to be at negative 4. So 5, 5 would be negative 5. It's going to look like this. Anyway, I don't even have that last part. When I saw the 
that make sense to a negative on the inside? It's going to flip it the other way. Okay? Now, what about timesing on the inside? Who can tell me what that is? Good job. This is a horizontal stretch. So if you're timesing on the outside of a function, it's a vertical stretch. It stretches it vertically. Now, horizontal stretches are a little tricky because you don't stretch it by what it tells you to stretch it by. You stretch it by its reciprocal. So right here, we're timesing by a 2. What does that mean we're going to stretch it by? So we have to take the reciprocal, and that's going to be 1 half. So I'm going to put HS, that's a horizontal stretch, by 1 half. So instead of stretching this up or down from the x-axis, we're going to stretch this horizontally on the y-axis. Now, it's not really going to be a stretch because when we times it by one half, that's actually more like the shrink where we're compressing it in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take all the x distances here and we're going to shrink them in by one half. Now, at this point, it's already on the y-axis, so we're going to leave it there. But at this point here, it's 3 away from the y-axis. What's half of 3? Or, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm moving on. It's 2 away from the y-axis. What's half of 2? 1. So at this point, it gets shrunk by a half, so it's right there. Then we're going to go to our next point, 4, 3. I'm going to shrink that in. Half of 4 is... And then lastly, we're going to take 5. What is half of 5? You guys can tell me half of 5 is 2 and a half, right? So now when I play connect the dots. Does that look right? Does it look like it's horizontally shrunk? Okay, now this is one that maybe you saw last year, or maybe you didn't. But if it's timesing on the inside, then it's a horizontal stretch. And it's really important that you remember that you're timesing by the reciprocal. Don't try to stretch it by 2. Stretch it by its reciprocal. It's kind of like with adding or subtracting on the inside. You have to change it a little bit. We had to do the opposite for adding or subtracting. Well, with the timesing, you have to do the reciprocal. Okay? How are you guys feeling so far? I think I want to try... All right, so horizontal scalings, this is just telling you to, to uh, make sure if it's multiplying on the inside that you use the reciprocal. And so if it's greater than 1, then it's going to, uh, and once you change it to the reciprocal, it'll tell you if it's a stretch or a compression. Okay, let's pause right there for a second, and I want to do a scale of 1 to 5. How are you feeling with these transformations so far, where 1 is... I really need help, and five is like, I'm feeling good. So I'm going to go around here, and I need everyone to give me one through five. So I'm going to get five, four, five, five, five. five. how are you feeling? Good, 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 good. How's everyone feeling here? Cool, cool, cool. Now, if this is one and you're like, I don't want to admit it, but I'm struggling, then what should you do at this point? Come after school. Do not trust me. <laughs> your desk. Transfer out. No, that is not the answer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just get through a couple of these, and we'll see how far we can get in the next 10 minutes, okay? Because we want to finish this, but I don't think we'll get quite there, but let's start. All right, let's look at this one. We're given that f of x is a square root. Show me with your hands what a square root looks like, guys. Square root is... This guy, right? Now, this one's a little bit tricky because I see 2x plus 1. Who can tell me why this one's tricky? Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, they're both on the inside. And not only that is, when we're trying to do left or right, your leading coefficient needs to so here's, here's what someone might do when they see this. They might say, hey, we are going to, I'm timesing by 2 on the inside, so that's a horizontal stretch. And would they be right? And the answer is yes, that 
so horizontal stretch. Uh, and remember, what do we have to remember with horizontal stretches? What are we trying to get by? The reciprocal, so that would be a horizontal stretch by one half. That's like what we just saw, that's okay. But then what they might say, what does a plus one mean we're doing? We do the opposite, right? So that would be, someone might say, well, that means we're going left. And to that I would say, you're so close. Here's the thing that you have to be careful of is when you're doing rights and lefts, you have to make sure you factor out the leading coefficient. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here I've got square root of 2x plus 1. And what I'm saying is that we need that 2 to be by itself, so I just have an x. Now, if I'm factoring that out, what's 1 divided by 2? Now it's in a form where I can see the transformation. So am I still doing a horizontal?